So, okay, uh, I updated the links on the course homepage, so we can take a look at those maybe first. Uh, I will just reload this. Um, so, maybe this one is the most interesting. And actually, it's uh, Uncle Bob that has uh, written these uh, PDFs also. And maybe you don't know who Uncle Bob is, but some of you might. Robert C. Martin, a really ranty old guy. So you can you can look him up, and he has a lot of speeches and ideas about how to uh, create software. And he uh, has. Uh, written about these principles also. So if we take, for example, we, the single responsibility principle, we have a PDF for it, and you can uh, kind of look it up. The notation in these uh, figures is somewhat uh, UML-ish, but I don't think it's actual UML. And in some of the PDFs, at least before, it was some older notation also. Uh, but basically, he gives some examples and he discusses what, what things are. And in, in, this, in this case, he has often two examples, one more, uh, one more uh, simple. If you, uh, you, can, you can probably recognize this. We did this with the circle. We did our, our uh, big fat circle class that has the get area and functionality like this, but also the draw functionality. So we have two applications that use the same rectangle class in this case, but it's also coupled to a user interface. And this is used in the graphical application, but not in the geometry application. And you get badness because of this uh, rectangle has multiple responsibilities. Uh, and this is the solution then to separate the, res the responsibilities in some way. Uh, has a more intricate example also with, with the modem. So responsibility design and separation is not always that easy to spot. So, but you can read more about it in, in these PDFs. Let's see if you can find. Uh, ah, here you have the, uh, the old notation that I learned. I talked about the clouds for the classes. Uh, and you can just imagine trying to draw something like this on a whiteboard. It's not that fun. So uh, it's kind of like good that this was abandoned. <laughs> but uh, well, if you, if you this is the Booch notation. So if you you find this this is uh, uh, th these types of class diagrams. Well, you know that it's probably pre uh, 2000 at least. I think. Maybe we can find a date in this document. No, we could not. The drag diagram is probably done pre-2000 uh, because uh, I think UML was around, at least started to form around that time. So uh, anyway, he discusses these, these matters in, in detail. And if you're interested, you can, you can find out more. And he also has a and a big document about the uh, design principles and design patterns and, and what we are actually uh, trying to achieve and, and what is happening to our software if we do not uh, do something. And I think he uh, goes through the principles once more in this document also, but from a slightly different perspective. And also the Wikipedia link should be uh, available to you to find information about the solid principles. So uh, moving on, dependency inversion. The principle of dependency inversion says that high level modules should not depend upon low level modules. Both should depend on some kind of abstraction. And abstractions should not depend upon details. Details should depend upon abstraction. This will increase reuse and changeability. Typical example is 
protected variations pattern. So, uh, maybe we have a, no, this is the last slide. Yeah, it is. Uh, let's, uh, we will take a look at it in, in, the, in these, this PDF first. So, this is the uh, procedural way to do things. You have some uh, high-level procedure function that calls some other functions that in turn call some other functions and some other functions and some other functions. So, you get kind of like a direct dependency from the more abstract to a more specific to more specific to more specific to more specific. So, for example, then if you change some detail in the file format, and this is way down in the, this call hierarchy, everything needs to recompile. Exactly almost as in the, uh, the, uh, the way we did the, with the FAT interface. We changed some, some part, uh, some client needed some new, new functionality or changed functionality in our FAT interface. We change it, and then we need to change a whole lot of other uh, clients also, even though they are not actually very directly affected by these changes. So, this is uh, not something that we would like, because, well, recompiling everything because we did some minute change, but this change was really, really far down, and had some kind of cascading effect. This can have well, um, effects that we would not like. So the idea then is to put some kind of abstraction in between so that the high level layer depends upon this abstraction and the lower level layer also depends on, upon this abstraction. So instead of the flow going steadily more and more towards the uh, detailed parts of the system, you kind of like break this flow by inversing the dependencies. So the middle layer in this example has inversed its dependency to go upwards instead. Instead of always just flowing downwards. And this will let us kind of like, if we make a change in here, the uh, change stops here, because this layer is just dependent upon the abstraction, not the, upon the actual details in this layer. So that is the uh, dependency inversion uh, principle. And the example that I have is uh, somewhat similar. We can imagine that we have a client and we have a button and we have a lamp. So the client is dependent upon the button, that in turn is dependent upon the lamp. And this means that the client, we have this flow of, of dependencies from the, from the abstract, the more generic to the more special. And the idea, idea is then to uh, instead make an abstraction here and let the client depend on the abstraction and the button implement this abstraction. And the same thing actually for the, for the uh, lamp. So we can break this, this flow from the more abstract, the more generic to the, to the more special. And in this case, we also kind of like can see that, okay, we have this on and off actuator functionality in an interface instead, we can can implement this in not just the lamp, we can have an engine that can be turned on and off, and we can plug this into the uh, sensor quite easily. And a button is just one type of sensor. We could have a sensor to, to measure temperature or uh, whatnot. So we should strive to invert our dependencies 
uh, if we have the case that we have a high level module class or whatnot that depends on low level modules so try to find an abstraction between these and depend upon the abstraction instead all right I think that's it for the solid principles uh, so we have this single responsibility open closed principle list of substitution principle interface segregation and dependency inversion principle and that's uh, actually about it for the theoretical aspects of the course any questions so far no good we can take a look at the online exam for you who have not uh, seen it yet you find the uh, URL here I'm just going to copy it of course and do something like this and you will see a page like this and what it is important is that you are logged in so if you're not logged in you won't see this at least uh, maybe I should log out So if you're not logged in, you will just see this. So please log in first. So, and when you're logged in, you will see this. And unfortunately, you need to enable uh, insecure scripts to get your username and password. But, <laughs> That's how things are. <laughs> In Firefox, you do it like this, I think. Options. Disable protection for now. And you will get the username and password. And you can just take your little username and password. And it should be the same username, actually, then, that you had before. And you will get a page like this. I would like to uh, prompt you to read the instructions carefully. And I've passed the test, so I won't be able to show you. Maybe I can just make a quick fix and remove my test. So, I removed my test, so now I can start a new one. Uh, and you get the questions like this. You see how much time you have left, how many questions uh, you have left, and you can have some navigation here also. So, uh, I just check some alternatives here. Go to the next question. If uh, you would like to answer, to have an answer that is none of the alternatives, you need to first check an alternative and then remove it and then you can save. A little bit wonky maybe. So, but I will just uh, quickly go through this. Okay, uh, maybe I will so and and um, if you for some reason should should uh, become 
no, not the questions will not be in Swedish in, in the real exam. If you for some reason uh, go back to this page, you can just click here and you will continue your test. In the test exam, most of the questions are in Swedish, but the questions are not from the course anyway, so you can just use it to get a feel for the system and see that everything works as expected. When you're done, you hand in the test and you confirm that you would like to hand in. Oh, I unfortunately did not pass. Uh, so I can then start adding comments to my question. So I will get the question again. I will see what I answered. And I can then write something about why I answered like this. And in this part of the test, you have, uh, I will not say unlimited time, but it's not uh, as tight at it as it is when doing the, the actual question. So if you kind of like would like to uh, really look this up, you have the opportunity to do so and write your comments. Why did I answer uh, like this? Uh, typically, a bad answer is I was really stressed. You won't get any bonus points for this. Uh, but if you, you present a really good motivation on, on how you, what, what, why you answered like you did, you have the chance of getting a bonus point. So you write something, I was And you go to the next question and so on and so forth. And finally, you hand in your comments. And then there is a manual step where I will go through the, uh, your, your comments and uh, maybe award you a bonus point and also write a comment on your comment. And when the test period ends, the exam period ends, in this case, 19th at 1500 hours, you will have the chance to look at your test and see what you commented and what I commented. So you will have the opportunity to, uh, to learn. If you fail the test, you have the opportunity to learn some more. And maybe uh, if you have misunderstood something, I, I, I can point that out to you. Uh, so basically, that's it. And Right now, my idea is to open it at the 21st. Seems to be working right now, and I, I don't see why it should not be open. So I will probably open it, have it open for like two days or something like that, for you to do your first test. Then close it for a few days. And you will have the chance, if you fail the first try, and you will have the chance to look at your test and learn from your comments and my comments and study better for the next period. So uh, instead of having this long period uh, that was my first intention, I think I will have kind of like two days where, where the exam will be open and two days when it will be closed, and then it will open again for two days, and so on and so forth, for uh, three times, uh, so that you can have the chance to learn from your uh, previous mistakes if you did not pass. And passing the exam is uh, mandatory to get the passing grade in the course, and well, don't uh, underestimate the the uh, the test just because it's multiple choice questions. Questions can be quite tricky anyway, so uh, don't underestimate it. And then uh, you can plug in your expected grades for the workshops and so on and so forth, and see what kind of a grade you would like to uh, get. So. Any questions on the exam? Yeah? Yeah. We will probably have some, uh, some uh, extra exam after Christmas or something like that. 
but you should of course pass it. <laughs> <laughs> so every everything will not be lost if you uh, if you miss these three uh, op opportunities. But you should be able to to make it, I think. Especially if if you fail, kind of like the quiz part, and you take your time to add comments in a good way, then then you should uh, you should be able to pass it. All right. Any other questions regarding the test? No, every student will not have the same question. Uh, questions are randomized from a set of questions. And also the alternatives are randomized. So uh, you can have the same question, but not the same alternatives for answer. And also the order of the alternatives is randomized. So there are a lot of combinations. Uh, and of course, uh, it's it's hard to come up with with questions that are good. So the idea is that I I would rather not like to uh, have these questions circulated somewhere on the internet. So I try to make that a little bit harder. Uh, so when you take the test again, you can get the same question. But you can, will probably get some new questions, and it's you could possibly also get some new alternatives for the same question. So don't be too confused if you kind of like, oh, this question is I recognize it from my previous test, but the alternatives are not the same. Uh, so that is something to watch out for. Uh, yeah, regarding the uh, reading instructions, I think the, uh, I don't have all the questions in my head right now, but but uh, if you stick to the uh, reading instructions for the lectures, you should get uh, a passing grade. I definitely think so. Uh, and if you study these chapters from the book, you should definitely also get a passing grade and, and more, but it's pass or fail on the test. So uh, I think it's uh, uh, like 75 or 60 percent you need to achieve on the test. One thing to remember also is that one, okay, we'll start a new test. So, Zero, one, or multiple alternatives can be the correct independently of the grammatical style of the question. So this is something to remember, that independently on how the question is formulated, there could be uh, answers that, uh, you could have multiple answers that are correct, or none of the answer could be correct also. Uh, so that is something to, because it, it only sounds wonky to add the both the singularis and pluralis uh, stuff to every question. It will just uh, be really, really hard to read. All right, anything else? Yes, I will uh, open the test the 21st, as stated here. Um, so between uh, the 21st and the 31st, you will get three, three occasions to do the test. And I will probably have it open for like two days, and then have it closed for, for a small period, so that you can check your answers if you did and study more on those parts, and then it will open again. Yeah, you don't need to, to do your first, uh, you don't need to do your first try on the, on the 21st if you don't want to. 
you can uh, can of course uh, do the uh, second try or the third try also but then again you will miss one try and you have the whole uh, the whole uh, kind of like period to uh, when when the test starts it has a final deadline and you have whole this whole uh, this whole uh, period to start and complete your test. But even if you have an exam on the 24th, I would suggest that you take your first uh, shot and try to pass this uh, one also. At least you get a feel for how what the questions are. but it's not mandatory. All right, anything else? If you pass the first try, it's possible to try two more times for higher grade. Uh, basically, it's uh, fail or pass on the exam only, so you don't have to worry about score ha having a high score. So if it's pass, it's pass. I have a question. Is it possible to use enums in model? Does it violate the model views operation? No. Uh, enumerations uh, can be put, put anywhere you, you want to. There's nothing intrinsically bad or specific about uh, enumerations that says that they should always be in model view or controller. So you need to take care on uh, what the enumeration is actually about. Uh, and I would be wary if it's called something like visual representation in GUI enum. Then I would not put it in the model. But for example, for the cards, we had the values and the, uh, the um, color of the card inside the card class. And the card class was in the model. So having enumerations in the model can be perfectly fine. So we have a question about the third workshop. Exactly. So uh, instead of adding a type attribute for the type of rule here, you should use the visitor pattern. Because we could, of course, and if we take out, if we remember the shapes uh, hierarchy, we could add a string that tells you what shape it is, and you could use this string to do kind of like what the visitor did. But then we would have selection based on type. Uh, and this could does not need to be a string. It could be an enumeration or an integer or whatnot. So uh, basically, this instruction is to uh, uh, guide you into the visitor pattern instead of uh, doing some quick and dirty fix and just getting the uh, functionality for it. Any other questions?
All right, uh, tomorrow is the last lecture, then we will be back in our basement, uh, so everything will uh, work a little bit smoother, I hope, and if you have anything you want me to talk, uh, anything to, to talk extra about or to focus on, on uh, please let me know. You can use the Slack or you can send me an email. Uh, I will be out of office um, during this afternoon, but I will take a look at it uh, this evening so that uh, that I can know what you are expecting for, for the last lecture. And if you don't come up with anything, I will just make a generic kind of like repetition of all the stuff that we have been going through. And you can ask questions as we go along. If you missed the submit workshop one, uh, you, depending on how, how much you missed it, <laughs> if you just kind of like did not do it at all, then you will have to do the Yahtzee game and do the uh, 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 domain model for the Yahtzee game instead. And you hand this in in uh, towards the end of the course. I think we have some deadlines here. Final submission for extra examination. So really towards the uh, end of November. So the course is OK. You did, uh, you did submit it the first time, but you need to correct it. Then you have the final work of submission deadline for examination passing grade fixes is the 14th of November. Maybe also you had some extra uh, or special arrangement with your tutor and then you should contact your tutor regarding this also. But basically 14th of November. An example with more user input interaction. Most of the ones we had were pretty simple for the view for tomorrow. Yeah, sure. Uh, possibly we could we could take a look at my suggested solution for workshop number two, as it will be uh, the deadline for handing it in is, is is tomorrow anyway. So we could maybe take a look at that because that is a little bit more advanced from the input side of you and you side of things and you are possibly also familiar with that. So that could definitely be an idea. Uh, uh, question about the postponement of the workshop two deadline. Uh, no, you will not have. Uh, it's just one day, more or less. So, uh, and it's just for practical reasons. Uh, I don't think you need, will need actually in any extra time for workshop number three. Uh, it's not that uh, large compared to workshop number two also. So if you have paid attention during the lectures and stuff like that, workshop number three for the passing grade should be quite simple. Yeah. 
user validation is not part of the uh, requirements for, or input validation is not part of the requirement for uh, workshop number two, at least for uh, the passing grade. When user put member index number and we check it if member exists, uh, if this should be part of the sequence diagram. Well, if it's in the code, it should probably be part of the sequence diagram. All right, I think it's time to, uh, to end the, the uh, 11th lecture. So we've got one suggestion for tomorrow to take a look at some more uh, intricate input. Uh, so we will do that. And if you have any, any other suggestions, uh, please let me know. And I will see what I can conjure up. Until then, uh, have a nice Day, and I will try to render some movies from this uh, Connect recording also, but I'm not really sure about the quality. So let's hope for the best. Bye for now. <laughs>